Hey YouTube, welcome back to another vlog. In today's video, we're gonna show you guys what we eat on a keto and carnivore diet. We also picked up a bunch of new gym equipment. Uh, Amazon Prime Days just passed, so they had a bunch of great sales on home gym stuff. So we're gonna show you everything we picked up and we're actually gonna assemble it on camera. Hopefully it goes smoothly. We just wanted to show you guys a simple home gym setup that anyone can set up in their own house. One of our goals for this year was to get back into the gym more and increase our muscle mass and some strength. So hopefully it inspires you guys on how you can set up a simple home gym and your own house just so you can get more activity in throughout the week. And we are working with a pretty limited amount of space since it's just in our garage. So I don't think you need a ton of space to be able to set up a home gym. So for us, this just made the most sense in helping us reach our goals uh, without wasting a ton of time driving back and forth, figuring out the, you know, the baby care situation. Um, that's just something unrealistic that we couldn't really commit to. Yeah, it's, it's basically impossible for the first little bits. Baby's still really young, so. And not to say that you need all this gym equipment to get a good workout at home. You can get a great workout using just body weight or resistance bands. Anything you can do to incorporate more strength training into your routine is definitely beneficial. So we're just gonna make a super simple breakfast or lunch today. It's about almost one o'clock actually. Uh, so super simple, just gonna have some ground beef, some canned salmon, and we'll probably add some additional fat in the form of tallow.
So the Amazon Prime delivery guy just came by and um, got our package of sardines. So lately we've just been ordering these off Amazon. Honestly, it's much cheaper. For the longest time we were like going to the store every couple of days and I don't know, buying a couple of cans of fish, but we just we, we just go through these so quickly now. It's just, you buy them in bulk off Amazon. Um, they don't carry every single brand and sometimes they're not in stock, the spring water ones, but um, if you guys are into sardines and you eat them regularly, just we just started doing this. Um, that way we don't have to like drive around town looking for sardines and canned water, or looking for canned sardines and water. So um, this is really good. We can just eat them straight. Uh, we don't have a problem with that. It was a bit of an acquired taste for us when it comes to sardines. We had to start off with like avocado mayo, capers, and you know, making more of like a sardine salad, making a little bit like more recipe style, but now, or just out of laziness. <laughs> we just eat them straight out of the can. But they actually taste really good. I like the flavor. Um, another tip is you can sprinkle some nutritional yeast flakes uh, if you'd like. It adds a little bit of cheesiness to it. Or you can also squirt some lemon juice. If you're on carnivore and you allow like condiments and seasonings, boost carnivore. Um, capers, lemon juice, pickles. Anything acidic will help cut the fishiness of sardines. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like to eat sardines straight up. But I think it just over time, I just got lazier and lazier and just started eating them out of the can. <laughs> Sardines have great macros. They are a great source of protein and fat. We pretty much eat them every day now. They're a staple for us. And just the fact that you can, you know, pull open a can and um, have a snack that's like filling and satiating, doesn't trigger any like additional hunger or anything. So sometimes if uh, during the day, I think I might be hungry. I ask myself, would I eat a can of sardines? And if the answer is yes, that means I'm actually physically hungry. And if the answer is no, then that means I'm probably not hungry and I'm just bored. <laughs> so for dinner, we are having some oxtails tonight. I'm gonna make them in the Instant Pot. I recently started oxtails in the Instant Pot. It's a little bit faster than the oven method. We do have a recipe on our channel of baking oxtails in the oven, and it's very, very tasty that way, but it does take a little bit longer. So if you're in a pinch for time, you kind of still want that uh, really fall apart tender texture, the Instant Pot works great. And so this pack is from Costco. It's about three, 1.8 kilos, like three and a half pounds. Four pounds. Four pounds? Almost four pounds of oxtails. Uh, so this is more than enough for Kevin and myself. And I might actually have some sardines for dinner as well. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to sear directly in the Instant Pot uh, using the, the saute function, the brown saute function. I know the Instant Pot doesn't have like the most powerful saute function. So you can either roast these in the oven first um, if you want like a really, really nice color or you can, you know, do it like cast iron stove top. But for the sake of minimizing dishes, because I am tired of washing dishes, <laughs> we're just gonna saute them directly in the pot. So it's like a one pot recipe. dry these off a little bit because we're going to sear them try to get a little bit of a brown color and that kind of helps lock in the flavor and just yeah make them taste a little bit better obviously you can use uh like if you want to use aromatics onion garlic mushrooms you can it's up to you we have a recipe on our channel with that i use onions and garlic with this exact cooking technique so i will leave that linked up top as well as down in the description below if you're interested but i'm just going to keep this like more simple today and all i'm going to do is put a little bit of tallow inside the instant pot the oxtails have some fat on them already so you don't need like a ton of added fat just kind of enough so that the oxtails don't get too sticky on the bottom of the pan because the instant pot uh the pot that it comes with it's it's not like a traditional non-stick so i'm going to sear these in batches just try to get some brown color on the outside this takes a few minutes this process but it's worth it 
it actually comes out a lot better when they've been seared. going to deglaze the pot. I'm actually using some beef broth that I made by myself with some leftover bones that were in my uh, freezer. I actually made this in the Instant Pot, so it's a little bit jelly-like. Because I did add some seasonings to this broth uh, when I made it, just a little bit of thyme and bay leaves just for flavor, but obviously you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, and of course you can use water, you can use beef stock, the packaged beef stock. I just happen to have this on hand. So I'm just gonna pour this in. And the purpose for deglazing is just so we get all the amazing flavor that just came out of the oxtails, but also so that the Instant Pot doesn't go into like burn mode. I don't know if you guys have ever like experienced burn mode on the Instant Pot before, but basically your Instant Pot just, I think it turns off for like, I don't know, it just stops cooking um, because there's like a thick crust of stuff on the bottom. I don't even know if I explained that properly. Is it burn mode? Burn mode, yeah. Okay, so just deglazing the bottom of the pan with the liquid. So I'm gonna just dump everything back in. So I didn't actually add any salt to the bone broth when I made it yesterday uh, because I wanted to make sure that the baby could have some if he wanted to. So I'm just going to add a little bit more salt into here. Maybe about a tablespoon for four pounds, I think. Yeah, okay, Kevin agrees, so. I don't need to add a ton of water just so that most of the oxtails are covered. Um, I kind of just eyeball it. I do have detailed recipe instructions on the blog, but today I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Okay, so I'm going to cook this for about 80 minutes. 